Thank, thank you, Dr. Mullen, for the introduction. Esteemed faculty members, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. By definition of FTF, as given in Resolution 2178, FTF is a borderless phenomenon. As such, until the world is free from FTFs, Bangladesh too is not likely to get rid of this threat. But Bangladesh so far could effectively counter the FTFs. In this connection, at the beginning, I would like to give you the bottom line up front as regards to FTF threats in Bangladesh. I'd like to emphasize and say, Bangladesh is a no-go for FTFs. No-go for FTF doesn't necessarily mean Bangladesh is totally free from the path of FTFs. But I mean, Bangladesh has evolved effective measures against the FTFs. At this backdrop, I would like to attempt responding briefly on four key aspects of Bangladesh as regards to FTFs. Those are nature of FTF threats, approaches to address the issue, practices, those have proved effective for Bangladesh, and the key challenges. Ladies and gentlemen, I will take about 28 minutes for my talk. I think an overview of the environment in Bangladesh for terrorists would be crucial for you to, to comprehend my talk. As such, before embarking on the first question, I'd like to discuss the environment in Bangladesh for terrorists. <clears throat> Geographically, Bangladesh is a very small country, but as a nation, it is the eighth largest with 164 million people. The geographical area of Bangladesh is no greater than the size of the state of Florida in USA. Bangladesh is the third Muslim majority country and in terms of population density, it is number one in the world. Imagine if all the people of the United States of America are put in the state of Florida, the population density would be the same as that of Bangladesh. Bangladesh has poverty and lack of education. The country is volatile with constant political feuds and some radicalized elements of the society. Some European nationals of Bangladesh origin have already supplied ice with mercenaries. This makes the country quite vulnerable, particularly against the backdrop of ice increasing influence in nearby Afghanistan and Pakistan. Do these facts really make it right for recruiting FTS from Bangladesh? In fact, no. Let me tell you why. Firstly, the opposition to terrorism runs deep in Bangladesh, which has long cherished a tradition of secular tolerance. An example of Bangladesh moderate and tolerant posture can be observed when Muslims, Hindus, Christians, and Buddhists join together and enjoy each other's religious festivals like Puja, Eid, Christmas, and Pavarana. National holidays are declared for the major religious festivals so that all people, regardless of their faiths and identity, can participate. Indeed, Bangladesh majority of Bangladesh's large Muslim population rejects violence, and the nation is more concerned with achieving economic prosperity amid numerous challenges. Bangladesh is a rare example of a Muslim majority democracy with growing economy. The fact is clearly echoed when a former U.S. ambassador to Bangladesh, Mr. Dan W. Mazina, remarked, and I quote, a moderate, tolerant, democratic country, Bangladesh, the world's eighth most populous and third largest Muslim majority country, is a viable alternative to violent extremism in a troubled region of the world, unquote. Secondly, the density and nature of population make it difficult for the terrorists to train, operate, and hide anywhere in the country with secrecy for long. Bangladeshi police have repeatedly confiscated illegal arms and have stopped terror plots before they could be carried out. For example, police in Bangladesh arrested Samyun Rahman for allegedly recruiting militants for both Islamic State and Jawahat al-Nusra, a fact singled out for praise by the U.S. State Department. Next, Sheikh Hasina was Bangladesh Prime Minister from 1996 to 2001. 
and has been again since 2009. Along the way, she has had to deal personally with extremism. She has survived several assassination attempts, including a 2004 grenade attack that killed 24, injuring another 500. The result is today's zero tolerance policy of our government against extremism and terrorism, both foreign and domestic. Bangladesh now works closely with allies to prevent the country from falling under the influence of terrorists. Finally, IS has few allies that can help it tap into Bangladesh's large Muslim population. Pro-IS sentiment, simply put, is very weak in Bangladesh. Consider that in an ignominious list of most pro-IS tweeting countries, Bangladesh is nowhere to be found. IS much vaunted social media reach has not had the desired effect on Bangladesh's largely Muslim, moderate and tolerant population, which at the end of the day is more concerned about putting food on the table than embracing religious fundamentalism. To date, no Islamic group based in Bangladesh has declared allegiance to IS. For all these reasons, ISIL probably have left Bangladesh out of their expansion plan, despite being the third Muslim majority country of the world. Having said all this, there have admittedly been instances of extremist violence and clear warning signs that one day Bangladesh could succumb to IS influence. Now let's discuss the nature of FTA threats and the challenges. During the UN Security Council meeting held in 2014, Attorney General of New Zealand commented that there could be no one-size-fits-all responses against F FTAs. Very rightly said he. Responses depend on the threats being dealt. Nature of terrorist threat in Bangladesh is complex with historical references, but not violent to be alarmed of. FTAs of Bangladesh could be divided into two groups, South Asia region-focused FTAs and ICE-focused FTAs. Among those, former is an old trend and the latter is a recent phenomenon. South Asia region focus group has a historical background. During the Soviet-Afghan war, to assist the Afghan Mujahids, a good number of Bangladeshi and Indians traveled to Pakistan in the early 80s. After the training in Pakistan, they joined Afghan Mujahids. While fighting in Afghanistan, Mujahids from Bangladesh, India, and Pakistan were introduced with Osama bin Laden, who preached them on jihad and Sharia law. After the war, in the early 90s, many of the Afghan veterans of those countries came to Bangladesh and formed nucleuses of few of the extremist groups. Their objectives was to operate from Bangladesh and establish Sharia law in this subcontinent. Due to the geostrategic location of Bangladesh, Afghan veterans selected Bangladesh as the base of operations, and thus the history of FTA began. Besides the ideological ag agenda, these groups presumably have issues related to the regional strategic interests. ICE-focused Bangladeshi FTAs may again be divided into two groups, Bangladesh origin Bangladeshi nationals and Bangladesh origin other nationals. So far, only four Bangladesh origin Bangladeshi nationals have joined IS. Another boy and a girl attempted to join, but were apprehended before they could leave the country. Among Bangladesh origin other nationals, 11 Bangladesh origin UK nationals directly joined IS from UK. A 12 member Bangladesh origin UK citizens use Bangladesh as a transit to join IS. In addition, police have arrested 26 suspected IS from Bangladesh. Now let us see the challenges that these FTFs pose. On return to Bangladesh, former FTFs started radicalizing the general mass on their newfound ideologies. They established rapport with the religion-based political parties of the country. To show presence and power, they conducted a number of fatalities between 2001 and 2005. 
Jamaat al Mujahid in Bangladesh synchronized 500 bomb blasts in 66 out of 64 of the country on 17 August 2005. Present Prime Minister of the Republic of Bangladesh, the then opposition leader, was grenade attack in a party meeting on 21st August 2004. Previously, Harkat al Jihad al Islami Bangladesh plan of killing 28 intellectuals was intercepted by the law enforcement agencies in 2000. However, since 2006, till that, present government has successfully checked the militant activities and apprehended most terrorists, including their leaders. Besides, eyes focus Bangladesh origin, UK citizens are posing challenges by using Bangladesh as a transit and radicalizing the educated youths. Now let us review a case of FTF named Mufti Hannan, who returned from Afghanistan and the trouble he caused for Bangladesh. Mufti Hannan, he was educated in the Madrasa, that's the religious-based education institution in Bangladesh, India, and Pakistan. He had training in bomb making and on arms in Pakistan while he joined the Afghan Mujahids uh, to fight the Soviets. He met Bin Laden in 1989. He came back to the country in 1992 and formed Harkatul Jihad Islami Bangladesh. He was the operational commander of this group too. His group used to be funded from overseas through the NGOs operating in Bangladesh. His activities include bomb explosion in several places, including assassination attempts on the Prime Minister. He was arrested in 2005, and at present, his trial is in the final stage. Ladies and gentlemen, please note the time frame here. While he joined the the Afghan Mujahid as FTF, that was in early 80s. After 10 years, he came back to the Bangladesh and formed the group. Now let's talk about the approaches to counter FTFs in Bangladesh. Present government of Bangladesh has been outstandingly successful in combating FTFs. Success of Bangladesh government was applauded in US State Department's annual country report on terrorism 2009 and 2014. The report praised Bangladesh government's efforts in denying domestic and transnational terrorist safe haven in Bangladesh territory. It also recognizes government's political will and firm commitment to combat terrorism. Owing to the complex and evolving phenomenon of terrorism, Bangladesh is not at all complacent with all these achievements. Government is relentlessly evolving measures to counter terrorism and its dynamic trend. Bangladesh government is employing both hard and soft power to materialize her zero tolerance strategy against terrorism. Now I'm going to present a few of those measures briefly. Prior to the election, the ruling party placed counterterrorism as one of the top priorities in the election manifesto. The prime minister accentuated her promise of election manifesto again in 2015 UN General Assembly. She stated that her government will show zero tolerance to terrorism of any kind. As such, the government provided strategic direction to law enforcement agencies for launching strong drives against suspected militants, leading to many, many arrests. Intelligence agencies have been instructed to work hard to prevent terrorism inside or outside the country. Besides, the Prime Minister has advocated for a South Asian task force for countering terrorism. To re-emphasize her firm commitment of combating FTF and terrorism, the government enacted Anti-Terrorism Act 2009, which was amended subsequently in 2012 and 2013. These amendments allow the court to accept videos, still photographs, and audio clips as evidence used by the FTFs for radicalization. The amended law also provides scope for the capital punishment 
and steep financial penalties for terrorism. Bangladesh enacted Mutual Legal Assistance Act 2012, which provides a legal framework for inter-country cooperation in carrying out inquiries, prosecutions, and trial of criminals. The government enacted Money Laundering Prevention Act 2012, which provisions prosecutions for money laundering and terrorist financing. Financial Intelligence Unit of the Central Bank of the Bangladesh has also taken up effective steps to curb terrorist financing. In July 2013, Bangladesh secured membership of Egmont Group, a global body of 131 member states to combat money laundering and terrorist financing. Bangladesh also became a member of Asia-Pacific Group of Money Laundering. The laws surrounding terror financing and money laundering in Bangladesh make it extremely difficult for the terror groups to deal with their finances. For all these measures adopted by the government, Bangladesh graduated out of the Financial Action Task Force Grey List in 2014. <clears throat> in 2009, government formed an eight-member National Committee for Intelligence Coordination to coordinate intelligence activities of all the agencies uh, present in Bangladesh. The Prime Minister of the country chairs this committee. In the same year, government also formed a 17-member National Committee on Militancy Resistance and Prevention to tackle terrorism and mobilize public opinion against extremist ideologies. Later, I would be talking on the activities run by this committee to mobilize public opinion through community engagements. Religion-based madrasha education is one of the branch of education system in Bangladesh. Aliyah and Kaumi are the two sub-branches of madrasha education. Aliyah madrasha runs Arabic lessons along with the mainstream education. On the contrary, Kaumi madrasha was confined to Arabic and religious studies only. Consequently, students of Kaumi madrasha were prone to radicalization. For instance, detective branch of Bangladesh police arrested three suspected Pakistani Lashkari Taiba members from Dhaka. Reportedly, they were harbor harbored in some Kaumi madrasha and involved in planning an attack on U.S. Embassy in Bangladesh. To integrate Kwame Madrasha with the mainstream education, government announced a new education policy in 2009. The policy ensures inclusion of mathematics, English, and science, and minimum standard of secular subjects to be taught in all primary schools up to the eighth grade, in order to make sure that the students of all mediums, including Kwame Madrasha, receive appropriate education. Bangladesh partners, United States, United Kingdom, Australia, and some European countries to combat terrorism. They have been extending training and intelligence sharing support to law enforcement agencies. Sharing of intelligence between FBI and Bangladesh led to arrest of a suspected Lashkari Tayaba leader, Shahidul Islam, and two others in 2009. They were planning to attack U.S. Embassy in Bangladesh. FBI revealed the information from two arrestees in U.S. who were planning to attack U.S. embassies in India and Pakistan, a classic example of intelligence sharing. To ensure effective counterterrorism, cooperation with, with India is important for Bangladesh. During her visit to India in 2010, Prime Minister concluded three security cooperation agreements with Indian counterparts. Those are agreement on mutual legal assistance on criminal matters, agreement on organized crime and illicit drug trafficking, and agreement on combating international terrorism. On January 28, 2013, Bangladesh and India signed an extradition treaty. Additionally, Bangladesh and India have agreed to implement a coordinated border management plan for curbing terrorism along the long and porous border. On October 22, 2013, Bangladesh has signed an agreement with the United States of America, which aims to enhance counterterrorism cooperation between the two countries. Soon, 
Bangladesh and Thailand is going to sign a memorandum of understanding for combating transnational terrorism. As a result of all these bilateral agreements, just four days back, India has handed over to Bangladesh a wanted criminal in exchange of another Indian criminals who were in Bangladesh jail. Now I shall talk on few measures that have proved to be very effective for Bangladesh. Execution of top Jamaat al Mujahideen Bangladesh leaders in 2006 created significant deterrence which cocooned the other militants. Subsequently, enactment of Anti Terrorism Act 2009 and its amendments allowed, quote, harder prosecution of terrorism and created further deterrence. Bangladesh government has banned six militant groups and blacklisted other seven. These measures have dissuaded the terrorists to form formal groups and exposed themselves for public support and sympathy. Effective coordination done by the National Committee for Intelligence Coordination, as I said in 2009, <coughs> among the intelligence organizations have led, led to foiling many terrorist attempts and significant errors. Community engagement is another important measure that has proved very effective. Imams, that means the religious leader in the mosque, all over the country are tasked to denounce Islamic extremism. School teachers and parents are sensitized to monitor children and their associates, reading habit and internet surfing pattern for any suspicious move. Journalists are involved in to provide informal counter-narratives. Media telecast, talk shows, seminars, and discussion in TV channels on downsides of FTFs. Islamic Foundation publishes books against terrorist ideology, and national textbooks contains the consequences of terrorism to aware the students. Periodically, counter-narratives against radicalization are messaged to the cell phone users. Owing to all these extensive community engagement program in 2014, Bangladesh became a board member and pilot country for the Global Fund for Community Engagement and Resilience. Above all, firm stance and commitment of the present government against terrorism of any kind has proved to be most effective measure to create physical and psychological pressure onto the terrorists or FTFs. Beside the four best practices I just stated, other measures of the government have also been outstandingly effective. The government has objectively articulated her strategy to counter terrorist and FTF threats in Bangladesh. Effective implementation of the newly enacted legal acts is another aspect that proved extraordinarily appropriate. Formulation and implementation of new education policy is a significant proactive measure that reduced the proneness of youth radicalization. Finally, Bangladesh initiative to unite with the regional and international partners in countering the terrorist and FTF threat has been so loud that those were echoed from the developed countries and regional and international organizations in the form of appreciations and high fives. Now the key challenges for Bangladesh. Bangladesh bordering areas in the east and southeast is thoroughly inaccessible, characterized by hills and reserve falls. Bangladesh lacks adequate resources to continuously monitor the bordering areas. As such, in the past, militant groups hid and established training camps in the inaccessible areas and conducted militant activities across the Poles border. Mufti Sheikh Obaidullah, an Indian trainer of Lashkari Tayaba, stated that he crossed India Bangladesh border many a times unnoticed. Recently, Jamaat al Mujahideen Bangladesh attempted to establish training camps in those areas but were busted by the security forces. Due to non availability of technology based port of entry management system, Bangladesh port, of, port authorities cannot 
access advanced passenger information. As such, they are unable to conduct evidence-based stability assessment and screen procedures. Consequently, FTFs use Bangladesh as a transit country to ICE. In 2015, a 12-member Bangladesh origin British family reported to join IS using Bangladesh as transit. The family ex exited UK for a family tour to Bangladesh, but while falling back, they were missing from Turkey. Reportedly, Ms. Rajia Khanam, a daughter of the family, was a suspect of UK police. Advanced passenger information could allow Bangladesh police to monitor Ms. Khanam's ill intention. The terrorist outfits usually receive financial support from within and outside the country in many different ways and means. Use of legal and illegal means of money transfer by, by the FTS make it tough for the government to identify, follow, and prevent terror financing. There are instances of terror financing through NGOs, and most of these NGOs are financed from outside. <coughs> government has canceled registration of UK-based Green Crescent, Saudi Arabia-based al Haramain, and Kuwait-based Revival of Islamic Heritage and Society for Terror Financing. Monitoring more than 100,000 NGOs operating in Bangladesh remains a key challenge for the government. Logically, the government of Bangladesh neither has personality profile of the diasporas, nor she has any control over them. People from those diasporas are posing challenges to Bangladesh. Reportedly, after the arrest of the top leaders of the banned extremist group Hizbut Tahrir in Bangladesh, few of the Bangladesh origin British citizens are controlling these groups sitting in London. Previously, the youth engaged in the, the Kaumi Madrasa were the targets for recruitment in the militant groups. After the introduction of the new education system and stiff monitoring by the government, militant groups are now using information technology to radicalize the skilled youth from mainstream education. A teacher of business administration of Dhaka University, the elite and epic educational facility of the country was arrested when he took over the chief coordinator and spokesman of Bangladesh branch of Hizbut Tahrir. There are teachers and students in other public and private universities who are susceptible to radicalization by the militant groups through internet. In the recent past, Rajiv, a blogger, was killed by the students of a very expensive and renowned private university of the country. The killers were radicalized through internet. At present, Bangladesh has limited capability to monitor suspicious cyber activity. Finally, to conclude, the UN Security Council expressed his grave concern over 25,000 FTA from over 100 countries who have traveled to join ISIL and ANF. Despite being vulnerable, Bangladesh government is successful in curbing the FTA threats. So far, only a negligible percentage of population could pave their way to IS. Government's efforts, starting from strategic direction down to the community engagement, proved effective in curbing FTR threat. In this regard, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina's personal conviction and successes achieved by her administration has been lauded not only by USA, but by most developed nations and such international bodies as UN. However, due to lack of resources, Bangladesh faces significant challenges in enforcing her strategies. Sometimes, access to international terrorist data, border management, digitized screening in the port and entry and exit, and monitoring mass internet traffic are few of the crucial challenges Bangladesh faces. Surely, Bangladesh with the assistance from the partner countries would be able to eliminate these challenges and keep the country a no-go for FTS at all times. I am hopeful. Thank you.